Hello, this is Fiery Master uh, Inquiry Horizon from Iceland. And just, you know, to add a bit of uh, variety to this channel, I will uh, do something else and just play live Blitz games. And I would like to look at a few chess studies now. And why studies, I ask? Well, there are several reasons. Studies can be very aesthetic. Uh, I mean, there's an author for every study, and he spent an awful time working on an idea, and usually they are very beautiful. And with the limited pieces, studies often demonstrate the power and also the limitations of uh, of the pieces in a very pure and uh, clear form. And though I also believe that working on game studies uh, equips you with uh, imagination and uh, gives you practical ideas to use in the games because, well, studies tend to be positions that can arise in an end game. It's not like uh, main one problem, main two problems, I mean, where the pieces seem to be uh, thrown randomly on the board. So, that's why I say you have heard the phrase study like, you found a study like finish, uh, study like save, etc. And so in this video, uh, I'm going to look at a few studies where we see a bishop battling against uh, pawns that you want to promote. And we will start with this one. This is a study by uh, Otten from 1892. And as always, we play white. And it's obvious that white would like to... Uh, Queen is pawns, either one of them. It should be fairly obvious that we are going nowhere, nowhere with this uh, g-pawn. The king is right here, the bishop is right here. We can never queen this pawn. That should be clear. So our best bet is the a-pawn. And at the moment it can only be stopped by the bishop because already the, uh, the black king is outside the square of the pawn. And to find the square of the pawn, I find it best to just uh, move along the diagonal. Then you see that the king is not there. So the square of the pawn is basically this. The king is outside of this, so he can't reach it. So it should be natural that the first move is pawn to a5. The pawn wants to promote. The defensive idea should be clear. Bishop needs to get to this diagonal. It's the only black squ black square to reach the pawn. The bishop is limited to black squares, that should be clear. So the only square to reach the pawn is a7. So the bishop needs to reach this diagonal. So the next move should be clear. He should have it. He wants to go to c5. And from there he can block the pawn. And the king can take care of the pawn on the g-file. So we have to stop this. Only one move to do that. King to d5. Taking control of this square. So again, black must try to get onto uh, the g1 to a7 diagonal. And he tries that with uh, bishop to h6. Again, trying to come to e3 to stop the a-pawn. Now you might suggest that we move king e4, and that does indeed stop the black bishop from uh, coming to e3, but as you can see from the uh, green arrows, then the black bishop would simply go back and forth between these two squares, f8 and h6, and white would have nothing better than to go between e4 and d5, we, we would have a draw. So, after bishop h6, unless we want to draw, we need to find something else. And indeed, there's something else. We throw in this uh, very nice looking the, uh, deception move, g5. And with this move, we... Uh, kind of block the bishop from reaching its uh, desired destination. 
if king takes g5 it should be clear the bishop no longer has the uh, ability to go to the di desired diagonal so we just play a6 bishop, bishop no longer has access to e3 and the pawn simply queens so we have to try bishop takes g5 but now king e4 and because of this destructive move g5 the bishop no longer can move lo move back to f8 and try to reach the uh, desired diagonal g1 to a7 from another angle so the only way to try to reach it is is it to h4 to get to the f2 square but now king f3 we take control of the f2 square and also the e3 square and now there's no more uh, moves that black can try the king is too far away the bishop can't reach the diagonal it can't even threaten it next move so we will simply queen the pawn here's another story this one by Hawaker from 1930 and like the other position it looks very simple the objective is clear white wants to queen the pawn the only problem is if we try to queen the pawn h7 black simply plays e4 he opens the diagonal for the bishop controls the queen square h8 and his next moves will be king h5 g6 and capture on a7 h7 So h7 doesn't work. So it should be clear that somehow we need to disrupt the bishop. Get it away from this diagonal. That's the only way to try to win. So the first move is bishop a7. We can more or less find this out by uh, eliminating the other possibilities. So bishop a7. So the bishop has to move along the diagonal. If we take the bishop, simply h7 and then queen. We queen on the next move. Nothing to be done about that. So the bishop retreats, bishop to a1. Bishop c3 would demand to the same. We now attack the bishop, it comes to c3 and king c2. If he had gone to uh, c3 on move 2, we get the same position by just playing king c2. So again we attack the bishop, and now it goes to the corner, and if you now play king b1, it's just a draw. If you play h7, again e4, and the diagonal is open. So just like the in the other study, we need, some, need something uh, very drastic. And I'm sure if you look at the position for a while, you will realize what it has to do. He plays bishop d4. An absolutely stunning move. He uh, offers his strongest remaining piece to be captured by the two remaining pieces of black. And by doing this, he takes control of the diagonal. Pretty, uh, pretty weird stuff. Pawn takes d4, king d3. The pawn on d4 can no longer move because of the king on d3, which is uh, blocking the pawn. And that means the bishop is stuck on the diagonal. And the diagonal has been shortened by the d4 pawn. So we will simply play h7 next move and queen. Okay, but what if bishop takes d4? King d3. A forcing move, because now if e4 we take the bishop and then we queen the pawn okay but let's try to keep on the diagonal bishop a1 well the same idea as if pawn takes d4 king e4 blocking the pawn uh, the bishop no longer has access to h8 and we will just queen the pawn but as you can see the king is he can't reach the pawn we will queen next move. Uh, 
And I have one more very similar study for you to uh, end this. Again, a very simple position, white wants to queen. And there's only one diagonal that uh, the bishop can reach to stop the pawn. And we start by blocking the access to this diagonal, king e4. The bishop tries to reach it again, bishop to d8. And now f king f5, which again blocks the bishop, simply bishop b6. And we're going to repeat the same stuff, king e4, bishop d8. So we have to find something different here. And again, a disruptive move that makes the uh, king block the diagonal for the bishop, b6. Now black must take this pawn because he can't deal with two pawns with the bishop. If bishop takes b6, h7, we have the d4 square under control and there's no way to stop the pawn. The king takes b6, king f5. And again we queen the pawn. And this was a study by uh, Levitt. I don't have the date actually. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little presentation, uh, more or less, you know, showing the battle of the bishop against against the passed pawn. And you know, there are always some opportunities to uh, to outclass the bishop for the pawn, since the bishop should be the stronger piece. So that's pretty pretty aesthetic stuff. Like studies are. So, uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye.